says I can be brutally honest. So, um, especially when it comes to the men that I believe that proclaim to be Christ, Christ as their Savior. So I'm going to share with you, kind of brutally honest, about what took place in San Bernardino this week. And why it happens. When someone comes to me at work and says, if you have such a loving God, why does he allow this stuff to happen? How many times I was asked that this week? I lost count. And why do they come to me? Why don't they talk amongst each other? Why this stuff happens? Why? I don't know why. When they come to me, I say to myself, why do you come to me? So, I shared with them why this stuff happens. And guess what they did? That's not what they wanted to hear. They didn't want to hear the truth of why these things happen in San Bernardino. So I'm going to share with you why these things happen on our planet. And I want you to understand that my heart goes out to every single one of the victims that are involved. But not just them, but their entire families. And all of us. Because doesn't it affect all of us in some way? Right? Think about it happening in a church. Is that possible? It is. That's why it's so important that our, our salvation is in check. That we are walking daily with Christ where we should be. Let me just read here a couple of passages. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, refer, ret- returning from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by whom? That's a word we don't use a lot in church anymore. Right? But he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days, and at the end of them was very hungry. Why is that important? Because he was weak. Physically weak, the body, not the spirit. Physically weak. The devil said to him, oh, here we go, if you are the Son of God, what do you say? Tell this stone to become what? Bread. And Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up to the highest place, the highest place, and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. How many of them? All of them, he showed him. And he said to him, I, ready? I will give you all authority and splendor. For it has been given to whom? Me being whom? The devil. The devil. But I thought God, I thought God created, I thought God spoke the world into existence. Did he not? We know it from Genesis. Right? He said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. But here the devil says, for it has been given to me. Right? And I can give it to anyone I want to. I can give it to anyone I want to. Hmm. So if you worship me, it is all whose? Yours. He is telling the author of life If you worship me, the devil, I will give you what? Not one kingdom, not two kingdoms, but I will give you all of the kingdoms of the earth. Go to Genesis with me, chapter 3. Here's where it took place, ready? Did you notice that that so far that Christ has not corrected the devil and said, no, the world is my father's? He didn't correct them. You know why? Because we live in the devil's world. And who gave it to him? Did God give it to him? No. Let me show you who gave it to him. Ready? Genesis 3, chapter 6. When the women saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, what? And desirable for gaining wisdom, she did what with it? She took it and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband. Who what? Who what? Who was with her and he did what with it? He ate it. Then their eyes were wide open and they realized they were in sin. Oh, wait, no, it says naked. No, they were in sin. 
That's at that point in time, they realized they did what? They sinned. They fractured the planet. At that point in time, they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together to what? Cover themselves. They were covering up their sin. At this point in time, when man defied God, guess what happened to the planet? Who then became Lord over the planet Earth? The devil. We know it because he said it's his. See? And it's because of that sin, guess what happens? Things like San Bernardino happen. Because we as man choose to live in sin still. What kind of planet would we have right now if everyone chose not to sin anymore? The entire six billion people. We have heaven on earth. We have the Garden of Eden all over again. No more sin. So if you so back in Luke, he says seven, four, seven, it says, So if you worship me, it'll all be yours. And Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord our God and serve him only. Worship the Lord our God and serve him only. So why do things like in San Bernardino you know, happen, guys? Why? You know why they happen? Because man chooses to live in sin still. That's why. See? Why? Well, I don't get what I want. I'm just going to go do what I want anyways. You know what I mean? I, uh, look, if I get high, I'm not hurting anybody. Just doing it to my own body. If I go out and drink, I'm not hurting anybody. Just my own body. Right? This is why things like San Bernardino happen. And it's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking to see it happen. Why? Because we live in a country where we have freedoms. And they're taken for granted. So why does it happen? Because Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve, man, all of us, choose to live in sin. See, we live in that nakedness. And what do we do? We try to cover it up a lot of times. And because we live in that nakedness, we live in that sin, the devil, it's his world, and he whispers in people's ears, look, this is okay, go do this. It's okay, go do that. No one's going to know. You're not hurting anybody. You are. And if this type of stuff in San Bernardino, I don't know what to say except the fact that this is what causes it. The sin of man causes this to happen. Do you understand? That's what causes this. So how do we as Christians respond to this? Love thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind. That's the greatest of the commandments and the second is love thee. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's how we respond to it. And we pray for the people that are involved in it. Pray for them. You know, I found myself this week praying for the families of the people who caused the incident. For their salvation. That's where I've been praying too. Because we forget. There's victims on the other side. Now there's people on that side probably knew things were happening. But there's some who didn't. And my prayer is, is that. People who are now putting death threats towards Muslim. That's going out there right now. My prayer is that they really understand who Jesus can be in their lives. And that stops. All this hatred. Needs to go. And where does it start? It starts with the individual. With us. See? Isn't it interesting? Jesus did not correct the devil and say, this is not your world, this is my father's world. He didn't correct them because Jesus already knew from Genesis chapter 3, but guess what? It was given to the devil by whom? By stupid humans. I can use the word stupid. I can check this in. Stupid humans. Right? So my prayer is that our prayers are that we would pray for the families, that salvation would be in check, and pray for those families on the other side of it, that their salvation can be in check. I know a lot of people in my lives that were Muslim who are Christian now. And know what they told me? They only believe it was so because someone was praying for them and showed them who Christ can be in their life. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord, and we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for you taking your heart out of your chest and nailing it on the cross for us. 
And I thank you for that in King Jesus' name. Amen. Can I have the men come forward, please? Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, offered it them, saying, If I have a cold, and I go to the doctor, he writes me a prescription. Right? It's a cure for what my ailment is. That's what it is. Penicillin, Tylenol, whatever it is that, that, that will help heal me. Thanks in San Bernardino, here's the cure right here. Here it comes right here. We're going to read it right now. The cure that will happen that men will not take other men's lives. When you, when you take the air out of a man's lungs, you can't put it back. I know what sin is. I came from it. Here's the cure right here. If you really want to know what it is, the prescription, I'm going to read it to you right now. <coughs> then he took the cup, he gave thanks, he offered them saying... Drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of a covenant. This is the repentance of sin. This is the forgiveness of sins. All the way back from Adam and Eve. This is the blood of a covenant which is poured out for many. This is the prescription. For what? For the forgiveness of sins. Right here. We come before you again, Lord. My whole life is coming before you, Lord. Everything I do. Father, I pray right now. My prayer would be that tragedies like this would never happen again. But the reality of it is, that prayer is a lie to me. Because until man stops the living in sin, these things will continue to happen. So my prayer is that salvation would come. And through salvation would be forgiveness, and through forgiveness would be redemption, and through redemption would be love, and through love would be what? No more San Bernardino tragedies. That's my prayer. Salvation. And I pray it in King Jesus' name. Amen.